Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this preview, this first look, I guess you could say, at the Chakra Healing Tarot by Malamir Logan. So Malamir reached out to me to see if I would be interested in sharing this deck with you guys. This is for, before we get even into anything, this is a prototype deck. So this is not a copy of the final version of the deck. So I don't, can't really speak to the production quality of that one specifically. Um, I can tell you what she shared with me about what the production quality should be, but this deck is a prototype. So it, don't judge the cardstock or anything like that. This is a not the final version of the deck. The Chakra Healing Tarot is currently funding on Kickstarter as we speak. So I will have a link to that in the description box down below. Now, before we dive into the artwork and all of that good stuff, again, just a reminder that this is a prototype and I also do have um, some, uh, uh, what do you call it? A manuscript of the guidebook so that I can share with you a sample reading of the deck and all of that kind of good stuff. Um, but I did want to speak really briefly to the sort of cardstock expectations and so forth that you should have. So the Kickstarter version of this deck will be standard tarot size, so the same size as this, which is 2.75 by 4.75 inches, and it will be on 350 GSM art cardstock with a smooth matte finish. Um, borderless imagery, the card backs are fully reversible, and it will have a perfect bound guidebook and be in a sturdy box as well. So let's get into it. Now, the first thing I wanted to mention was a little bit from the guidebook introduction, uh, just to give you an idea for what, what Malamir intended with this deck. So I'm just going to read you a bit of the introduction. So welcome to the Chakra Healing Tarot. This gentle deck that you now hold has made its way into your life for a reason. As, em as empaths, we are so tuned into the experiences and emotions of others and ourselves. In daily life, this can be powerful because we can intuitively know things that others miss. But when we experience a trauma, whether a major incident or a seemingly small heartbreak, we can end up holding that trauma in our bodies. I have created this deck that helps you gently connect with your body's beauty and intuitive insights. This deck combines Eastern and Western spiritual knowledge into one beautiful deck. No matter what you've been through, no matter what you are facing now, even if you have no experience with the tarot, the goal of this deck is to help you connect with your inner healing. Um, and it goes on from there. But just to give you an idea, this is really a deck that is hopefully going to help you to look at that aspect, like where your chakra or your energy body may be out of balance, what you can do to heal it, and can really like help you to hone in on those parts of yourself that you need to look at. Now, a lot of you guys know I have been looking for a good chakra deck for a long, long time. And this is the first chakra tarot deck that I've seen that I feel like I could get along with. So I'm going to dive in. I haven't spent like time with them card by card. So we're going to do that together. But I just wanted to sort of give you an idea of where I'm coming from. I am extraordinarily picky about chakra decks. So I'm going to take this in and form some impressions as we go through the artwork together. But I don't think I'll know my final, final thoughts until I've worked with it for some time. But for now, we're going to dive in and just see what comes through. Now, uh, Malamir mentioned that three of the major arcana cards feature all of the chakras. And this is something about the card anatomy that I actually want to talk to you guys for a second about. So the way that the artwork is depicted, you can actually see which chakras are active in any particular card because these gems um, or are, are highlighting which chakras are active. Now this is using the seven chakra system. So we have root, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, and crown. So the third eye is purple and the crown is like this uh, pinky, kind of pinky color. And so you'll be able to see on the actual figures in the card which chakras are active in that card. There are three cards within the major arcana that feature all of the chakras, the fool, the wheel, and the world, which makes sense. Those are also stopping points along the major arcana. So now let's dive into it. So here we have our fool card and there's this like almost like vo volcanic explosion happening far off in the distance where we have all the chakras sort of lit up outside of the mountain and sort of what looks like almost like lava, but it's like root chakra and throat chakra lava, which is really interesting. And then we have this figure here who's just at the edge of the cliffside, sort of looking off into the distance and this rainbow is coming down. So you really get this idea of an invitation to explore, to see what's gonna be happening, happening next. So next we have our magician and here we can see that there is the third eye and the crown chakra illuminated. Um, something else that came about, I did have Malamir on for a live stream discussion where we just chatted about chakras for like 
I think about two hours. Um, and I will link that in the cards of this video and in the description box. One of the things that Malamir mentioned during that chat is that in the Chakra Healing Tarot, there are two, except for these, um, except for the Fool, the Wheel, and the World that have all the chakras lit up, the rest of the Major Arcanas feature two chakras. Now, whenever you see two chakras, you can also think about the connection or the bond or the communication between those two chakras as well as the chakras themselves. And she was inspired by the tree of life, the Kabbalistic tree of life, which is how these associations were made. I can't speak to the tree of life because I really just don't know it well enough to speak to that element, but I, she got very excited talking about it. So if you want to see that, you might want to take a look at that live stream that we did together because there's a little more chat about the creation of this deck and like what she intended with it. But here we have a very Rider Waite Smith magician. I love that the third eye and the crown are what's illuminated here because of course to me, the crown is that connection with spirit, with the universe, which I feel like our magician has with that as above, so below we normally see in the iconography of the card. And the third eye makes sense for the magician as well, who is again, connected to that sort of uh, deeper level of self-knowledge. And of course, all of the tools of the tarot are on the table here. And now you'll also notice, um, depending on which chakras are illuminated, those play a major role in the actual uh, pal color palette used to illustrate the card. So that's really interesting too. Here's our high priestess. I love that she's sitting and I love that here we have the solar plexus and the crown illuminated. That makes a lot of sense to me again for the high priestess, the crown, again, that connection to spirit, but the solar plexus is also like, to me is very much about confidence and personal power. And the high priestess is a very empowered card. Again, we have the pink and the gold here in the color palette of the card itself. I love that her book of knowledge is also that pink color and the gold. I would say this is more of like an orchid shade. It totally works for me. Anyways, I love that. The Empress seems very throat chakra heavy, but we've got throat chakra and third eye chakra here for the Empress. It's interesting because if I were to choose, I may have chosen like a heart chakra connection here. But again, I know there is layers of the Kabbalistic tree of life in this meaning. So if you know the the tree of life, if you know the Kabbalah, that might, you might be able to build a connection there. But if I think about the connection between the throat and the crown, to me, it's about like, how do I communicate? How do I embody or live the messages that I receive from spirit? So there could be work there as far as the Empress is concerned. I love that she's got a bowl of fruit here next to her. And I love her body language, which to me is very reminiscent of the Rider Waite Smith. Next we have our emperor card and he's very solar plexus. I would say solar plexus heavy with throat as well. Um, really beautiful and empowered here. Of course, the emperor would know how to communicate his sense of personal power. That was his whole thing, right? So that really, really works. Oops. And it's, it can be jarring if you're used to the sort of color associations with the Rider Waite Smith to see the different color palette. But as you build and develop knowledge of the chakras, you'll find that this really makes sense. Here we have the Hierophant and heart and throat here is really interesting. It does give me a gentler feeling of the Hierophant because I typically see the Hierophant a lot more sort of dominant feeling and um, representative, rep representative of power structures. And here I feel like we get that sort of teacher energy. To me, heart throat is a very teacher connection. So this chakra association does make sense to me. Here we have the lovers. It's really interesting and it gives me pause to see the lovers without the heart chakra activated. We have solar plexus and I believe that's actually, is that third eye? Sometimes the color can be a little tricky, but that is the, I'm gonna use the backs as a color guide. That is the crown chakra. Um, so interesting. Now, traditionally the lovers card is really more about having to make decisions, having to make choice. And where choice is concerned, I can definitely see that connection to spirit, like what is in your highest good, that crown connection, and solar plexus, having the strength to make the decision that's right for you. I can see that there when, it, when we talk about choice. It's really strange to me though to not see heart here. And I'm sure that that, you know, that is for a purpose. And again, if I'm looking at this more from the perspective of choice, which the lover's card is often really about, then that makes sense for me. I love that they're embracing here though, so you still get that idea of connection and of bond that you can explore. Here we have the chariot card and it's heart and third eye, which is so cool. And I also love how one of the horses is embodying the heart chakra and the other, the third eye chakra. So you have this awareness that she's trying to balance out between heart and third eye, between gut and intuition and where her heart wants to go. That's really interesting um, depiction. Strength, here we have the heart and the third eye. We have the little lemniscate right on the forehead of the lion. 
Yeah, I love that. To me, strength card very much features heart chakra energy, so that works. The Hermit, solar plexus and heart, and the connection between those two. Love that. And the wheel, and here's the first card where we see that, other than the Fool, where we see all the chakras are illuminated. That makes sense for the wheel. When we're thinking about the Wheel of Fortune, we're thinking about cycles and of patterns, and really this the, looking at the energy body system as a whole when it comes to cycles and patterns makes sense to me. I'm gonna say makes sense to me a lot because that's what I'm looking for in a chakra deck is that I can, I can see the connection between the chakras and the meaning of the card because that's what I'm looking for, right? So here we have the Justice card. Um, I believe that's Root. Yeah, that is Root and Heart. Um, which for Justice, that whole, even her physical posture here, her body posture makes sense. Justice is really looking at the practical, at the tangible, um, but also that, is balancing that out with heart. And I think that's part of what the scales represent. For the hanged one, we have heart and sacral chakra. The heart and the sacral. That's really interesting. The heart to me, um, excuse me, the sacral to me is very water element. And the idea of suspension and of patience and of waiting, that with heart and sacral, that does make sense to me. I love this for a couple of reasons. This is sacral and solar plexus, and in the color scheme of the card, the choice to go with a monarch butterfly, which is orange and yellow, the colors of the sacral and, and um, solar plexus chakra, is such a beautiful representation of death. We see butterflies all the time as representations of death, and they are great representations of death because butterflies represent that transformation that we see happening in the death card. And so the fact that it mirrors those chakras is such a beautiful association to me, super smart. And the path between, when I think about the path between the sacral chakra and the solar plexus chakra, I'm thinking about like emotion and will. Now we see that path also in the hanged man, right? These are the same, this is the same connection here, unless this is root, but I'm pretty sure that's, no, I'm pretty sure that's sacral. Watch me be wrong. Sometimes the orange and the red can be a little tricky. Um, in fact, this one could actually be, theoretically, could be red as well. But I'm pretty sure that these are both sacral. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But either way, I love this. I love this butterfly analogy. And sacral to me, that seed of emotion and that seed of will in the solar plexus, when we're thinking about transformation, like we have to be able to move through that process. We're going to have feelings about it. We're going to have to look at that. But at the end, it's about, are we going to move forward? Are we going to let go when we need to let go? So that really works. The temperance card, yeah, see this is very much root. You can definitely tell the difference between the orange of the sacral and the root. I just needed to see more cards. So here we have root solar plexus and you can tell the energy of this feels very different. We, and this to me is like earth and fire almost. And, and it's not, that's not how it's depicted. It's more like fire water. Um, and I, my elemental associations with the chakras aren't gonna be everybody's. That's just sort of how I look at it. But I do love this figure. I love that he's like ungrounded and yet deeply connected with root chakra. I love the sort of balance in this card, like that sort of suspension between land and sky that we see here. And the fact that the water is like connected to this root chakra is really interesting to me. The devil. Okay, so this is funny. So something I'm noticing about the artwork that's kind of, kind of catching me off guard a little bit. I didn't know what I was looking at at first. I thought I was looking at, um, I thought this figure here was a figure with a big, long flowing beard. <laughs> Just my perspective, it was just like that first initial impression. This is a figure who's facing away from us, for, away from our view, and she's looking in a mirror. And she's looking in a mirror here and here and here. So there's like a three-way mirror. And she's seeing sort of, I think, different sides of herself. And here we have sacral and solar plexus chakra again. So we're seeing that um, connection between emotion and will and where that conflicts. And I think a lot of times the devil is where we've gotten, we've this, it's like instead of the balance of temperance or even of death, same chakra associations, right? But embodied in a very different way. This is where that choice, I think, to um, succumb to the desire is, is shown here, right? The tower, root and crown. What a powerful color palette this is also. Can we just talk about that for a second? I also love that where the um, tower is cracked, it looks like we can see either water or sky. So clear sky, like here it's all stormy, right? And then as the tower splits, there's this vision of clear sky that's coming through. Um, this person's feeling very defeated. They're in their root chakra, the crown chakra. It's almost like 
your foundation is being torn apart because that's what's in your highest good. And I'm using keywords like highest good for crown um, or higher self and foundation for root, but that really, really works for the tower card. The star. This is root and sacral chakra. I really enjoy when the artwork is showing these like full little gemstones. I don't know if you can see that, but see how there's like these like perfect little gemstones here versus um, here where I feel like, oh, they're still there. It's just sometimes they're easier to see as a whole gemstone and sometimes they just look like a glow. Um, but that's just the artwork depending on where the light is in the card because these are shining outward. Anyway, I digress. So the star, root and sacral. So this is our like foundation, our right to be and our sense of hope. And that just, that association works for me. Same association here for the moon. So we have the star and the moon, both with root and sacral chakra. And it looks like we're sticking with that association for the sun. I think I just realized something. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, we're gonna talk about this in a second because I think I just figured something out. Okay, so anyway, star, root and sacral, totally works. The moon, root and sacral also working. The sun, I love her body posture here is very um, exuberant, which I love for root chakra and um, sacral. And then here we have root sacral for judgment. So, um, and then we end in the world. I'm gonna just pause for a second though before we get into the minors and point out what I just noticed. So I'm gonna zoom us out a little bit. So we have the Fool card, all the chakras. And then for the first two cards of, no, I guess there isn't, maybe it's not what I thought. This is so interesting to me. Okay, so there are kind of groupings. So the Magician, Third Eye Crown, kind of a standalone. The Empress, Solar Plexus and Crown, so kind of a standalone. Then we have Throat, Third Eye for the Empress. Then for the Emperor, we have Solar Plexus and Throat. Did I say Empress for her? I meant High Priestess if I did. Then we have throat, uh, excuse me, heart throat for the Hierophant, solar plexus and third eye for the lovers. Heart, third eye for the chariot. Then we have heart, third eye again for strength. Solar plexus heart, and then we have the wheel. Now we start to get into what I think are some groupings, right? I think it's it could just be the way that these cards have come up. Like the last few, there seems to be groupings. So we have for justice, we have um, sacral and heart, and then we have sacral heart, and then we have sacral heart. So these three cards are all sacral heart. Then we have for temperance, we have root solar plexus, and we have root solar plexus again for the devil. So it's like in harmony and out of harmony almost for these two. Then for the tower, we have root and crown, so that's a standalone. But then our last four cards, so the star, the moon, the sun, and judgment are all root, so root and sacral. So it's interesting. I can tell by the way that the major arcana is put together that Malamir didn't just like try to force the, and we talked about this actually in her live stream, but she didn't try to force the tarot structure into the chakras or vice versa. She literally went with you know, what what worked, what made sense energetically to her based on her understanding of the chakras and the associations with the Kabbalistic tree of life to form those associations as opposed to just, okay, all the majors will be like this and all the minors will be like this. Like there's definitely, um, it's more than meets the eye is I think what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna set those aside and we're gonna start to look at the minor arcana now. Um, and then when we're done, I'm gonna give a shuffle and we'll pull a sample card so you can see what the guidebook, how the guidebook reads. But let's get in here. So here we have Ace of Wands. Now starting in the minors, there's only one chakra gem per card. So there's no more of these like sort of connections between two, which can be a little heavier and a little harder to learn initially. The minors have simplified it somewhat. So um, something that I noticed when I unwrapped this deck and we're gonna confirm it, but I'm pretty sure that the minors work from ace to 10 working top down in the chakras. So I believe the aces are always crown chakra and then all the way down through until we get to the court cards and the court cards have some consistent associations too. If I remember correctly from when I first took this out of the shrink wrap, I noticed that right away because there was consistency with the coloring and I was like, oh wait. Um, so our aces, crown chakra. Now crown chakra for an ace makes sense to me, no matter what suit we're looking at, because aces are that sort of big, less tangible energy for each of the minor arcana suits. The ace is represents, I think, the pure potential of the entire suit. So like the, the, the energy and the embodiment of fire, which is our element for the wand suit, 
all of that contained, right? What is the potential? It's like a seed, it's got everything within it. Or another way I like to sometimes visualize the aces is like a snow globe. It seems singular, but the entire universe or world of that suit is, is within the ace, right? So I think the crown chakra makes sense for that. Here we have, oh, sorry, <laughs> I meant to also say, here we have the exploration of what looks like a crystal cave. So she's kicking off, it looks like that journey, just beginning an adventure or a journey into the unknown, into that crystal cave. Here we have the two of wands and now the third eye chakra is lit. We're moving with our intuition as we begin the process of exploring. So here we were just, it was like, there's an invitation to go into the cave. Now we're in the cave and there's this exploring happening. In the three of wands, here we have the throat chakra and we're doing something. There's sort of an embodiment of magic or of uh, connection to the energy happening here. So it's starting to take some kind of shape, this experience we're having in the wands. And wands are one of those suits too that's a little bit um, intangible in a way. And so it's interesting to see how this is depicted here. The four of wands, I love the body posture here. Of course, we're in now into the heart chakra and the arms thrown back, the heart wide open, that is a great body posture for connection to heart chakra. And in the four of wands, we're usually celebrating a little bit of a milestone. Like here, maybe this pool was discovered. There's a there's a moment to go. We've, we've recognized there's some sort of um, milestone happening here. And then in the five of wands, I love that she's touching her heart chakra area here. Um, here's where we often see some disruption. This to me feels a little bit less tangible of an image, but I feel like What's happened here, if I'm understanding correctly, is that it's like maybe bits of the of the roof of the cave or the ceiling of the cave, I'm sure there's a better word for that, <laughs> the top of the cave, have sort of broken open and there's light visible. I'd be curious actually to see, let's actually take a look in the guidebook because now I really wanna know. Okay. So this is the heart chakra. The planetary energy here is Saturn in Leo, which is in the guidebook. Uh, it says, you are no stranger to being in sacred connection with yourself and the universe. You have invested in the relationship for quite some time. As you've grown in this connection, your needs have changed. You are no longer in the energetic place you were. This is a significant moment of growth. Now that's an important statement because in the fives, we normally have disruption, but we are along our journey, right? So we often learn from these experiences. Um, the shift you've experienced within means that your needs may also have shifted to meet where you are now. Go within and take stock of what you need now. Notice cues from within on any adjustments you need to make that will allow you to dive even deeper into relationship with yourself and the universe. There can be a feeling of uncertainty when a relationship dynamic changes. Any healthy relationship allows those involved to grow together. Allow this deepening sacred connection to meet you where you are as you continue to grow and heal. So it's the glowing key phrases, making a change to support your energy needs, growing sacred connection, a period of inner adjustment, emotionally ready for change. If this is suppressed, if this energy is suppressed, then it's stagnant connection, plateaued spiritual growth and hesitating to try new things. The traditional key phrases are internal conflict, energy in need of reorganization, mild competition, directing energy or enthusiasm productively. So she does address the sort of traditional meaning, but then also explains her interpretation of this card with regards to the chakra that's represented and the suit and the element and so forth. So that's what we get there. And I will read another one when we do a random draw at the end. I just was really curious about that one. So here we have the six of wands. Solar plexus chakra totally works for the six in my opinion. Um, and here we have sort of um, somebody in a leadership sort of position, looks like maybe even teaching some kind of class, but she's definitely being recognized for her knowledge, which works both Rider Waite Smith style, but also works with this chakra association. And here we have the seven of wands. She seems separate from the rest of the group. And this, now we're looking at sacral chakra, that's orange light, right, at the lower belly. We get the idea that she is like sort of looking out or watching for any disruptions that could come along. So we do get that idea of watchfulness. It's interesting because the seven of wands often shows somebody with the, on the higher ground or in some way defending or protecting themselves. So, um, this, now in the guidebook, she speaks to confidence growing, um, but you're feeling a bit unsettled. So that's kind of the energy in general that's being addressed here. So that unsettled feeling can be that feeling like you might be the target. Maybe she's over here worried that she's the target of everybody's gossip, so she's pulled herself away. There's different ways you could definitely look at this artwork, but that's one possible interpretation. Here we have the Eight of Wands. I love that this figure is running and we're still looking, I believe, are we still in um, orange here? Yeah, we're still in the sacral chakra, but just blazing a trail through the path. Um, so you get that fast moving energy we normally see in the Eight of Wands. 
Now we're into roots. You can see the color change, right, from orange to red. You can really see it when you've got the cards in front of you. Um, so here we have the nine of wands and it's that final stretch. It looks like it's a little treacherous. There's these like, like not super, um, steady looking steps to climb up, which again, that's a root chakra issue. Where do we feel grounded? Where do we feel stable? And looking to go to that final door. So this is that final push. And then in the 10, we have a figure who's carrying, what is she carrying? Like, it looks like wands that are, each one has like a sacral, or excuse me, a root chakra, like gemstone in it. And she's carrying them up this long flight of stairs. Now her stairs are a lot sturdier looking than um, his stairs were. So you get the idea that the path has become more solid. Um, and now there's this sense of responsibility and weightiness, but we're still in the root chakra here. So that is the ace through the 10. And now we're into the court cards. And I believe this stays consistent throughout the deck where the pages are all crown chakra. Again, that sort of makes sense. We see the echoing of that sort of ace energy. The pages are um, sort of working directly with the energy of the suit in a um, non-questioning, non-tangible um, kind of way in a lot of ways. So here we have the page of wands reaching for her wand. The knights are all solar plexus. That totally makes sense to me. Knights are movers and shakers and doers. Um, they're often leading with a certain amount of confidence with the energy of their suit. Um, so here we have our knight of wands sort of riding on horseback, charging through the caves. Our queen of wands is third eye for all of the suits. Our queens tend to be the more intuitive of the courts, so that makes sense to me. And here we have our queen of wands on seated on a stone throne within the cave. Still has a little cat companion, which I enjoy. And then we have our king of wands, and they are all throat chakra. And that, again, makes sense. Kings are able to communicate and express their desires. And if you remember, oh, where's my majors? Here's the majors. Um, the emperor card also had an active throat chakra and solar plexus, right? Because the kings, when you think about the um, kings, they're kind of like the little emperors of their suit, right? And as little emperors, they are a, they have that ability to embody what they need in their way that they communicate and hold true their ideals, right? They're really firm with their ideals. And here we have the King of Wands, who is, of course, an inspired speaker. So this is even better, I think. In a lot of ways, our King of Wands is very dynamic and tends to um, and charismatic and gets people to want to follow him, that sort of thing. So the, the throat chakra really works in that context. Now we're into the cups, which is typically my favorite suit. So I'll probably be extra picky, <laughs> but let's get into it. So our ace, again, with the crown chakra, I love how chill she is and she's holding her cup and the sea is sparkling behind her. It's very magical, this card. The two, we're in our third eye and we see these two possibly friends or more, you never know, but there's definitely a uh, harmonious relationship happening here between these two. And the third eye connection here, it's like they, they know that there's a connection there. They intuitively feel that. That's just me interpreting on the cuff, right? Or off the cuff, I guess I should say. The three of chalices, I guess we're calling them chalices, not cups. I've probably been saying cups, but whatever. Chalice and cup, similar, similar. Um, the three of chalices, we have these three friends just playing and enjoying each other's company with all these sparkling waterfalls. And this is throat chakra, which works. The heart chakra in the four, yes. I think this is where we might see some stagnating heart energy where things just aren't feeling as vibrant or as connected or as fulfilled but all the fulfillment is right there for the taking. The five of chalices, we see that sense of grief. There's some broken chalices over here and some that remain over here. So our Rider weight smith meaning is really solid here. I love that we get this sort of tender masculine representation in this card because I think, and maybe it's always a, a dude, I can't remember now. But what I like about this is the, the ex facial expression on this card. Look at him, he's like, oh. Just makes you want to hug him, right? I just, I like seeing that. I like seeing um, tender representations of men, just like I like seeing fierce representations of women so that we can see outside of that sort of stereotype that we get with our gender stuff. Um, six of chalices, solar plexus here. I love the sparkling waterfalls of different colors to match the chakras in the backgrounds of these cards. I'm really loving that cohesiveness, tying them together. The six is reharmonizing, but it's specifically in the cup suit or in the chalices suit, we're looking at like memory and like daydreaming and, and all of that kind of stuff. But are we doing? And I think the solar plexus is definitely a chakra of doing. She's not doing, she's just kind of caught up. So this would be, to me, this would speak to an imbalance in that chakra. 
Here we have daydreaming. What was I even thinking with the six? Oh, six was like memory. I kind of went off on my own tangent there, but um, still it's not doing, right? We're lost in memories. Sorry, I just had to correct my interpretation because I got like caught up in the moment there. The seven of chalices here, we're into the sacral chakra. Um, very emotion here. We're really in our emotions and that's super true of the seven of cups. When we're in a seven of cups moment, we're very like waist deep, heart deep in our emotions. So this makes a lot of sense to me that it's sacral chakra, which to me is that emotional center or one of the emotional centers in the body. And we're sacral still in the eight of chalices where we're doing that walking away, leaving behind. And now we're into the root for the nine and the 10. So this seems consistent across the suits. In the nine, she seems very content, almost like she's floating in the universe and there's these cards, or car cards, there's these cups around her, these chalices around her. And then in the 10, really rooted within her community. I feel like this is more community than family in this card, or it could be a very large chosen family, but it has that kind of community feel. Our page in the crown chakra, love the little seahorse, so magical. And she's reaching again for her suit, just like we saw in the um, wands. I'm just gonna grab it. We saw the reaching, kind of reaching for that exploration. Maybe that was in my head. I thought we saw reaching. Maybe it was a different, oh no, page, not the ace. Oh my gosh, I was like, I know I saw it. Yeah, here we go. So here we have the page of wands reaching for that wand, reaching for that element. And we see the same thing here with the page of cups, page of chalices, that feeling of reaching for, oops, of reaching for that element. And I think that is really um, spot on for what the page energy is all about. We're trying to get a hold of our element. We're trying to grasp it, um, learn to work with it. And that's what we see here. Our night solar plexus, love this. Yeah, she looks, she looks very embodied and I love that. I love the, the confidence in the nights for sure and I love the change in perspective so we're seeing her kind of coming towards us, love that. And again, we have third eye for the queen of cups and here she's surrounded by tranquility. The pool isn't moving, it's still but sparkling and we have moonlight in the background which I love. She's seated on a seashell chair or throne I should say. And then here again, we have our king surrounded by the waves in the water, throat chakra, again, really works for the kings for me. And now we're into the swords. So here we have our ace of swords, crown chakra, two of swords, third eye. Now think about it, third eye for the two of swords. The third eye is all about intuition and um, our connection to that intuition. And here we have the two of swords, a card traditionally where we see the figure blindfolded and having to really tune in to making what is the right call, right? Making the right choice. And here we have that intuition guiding that choice. The three of swords for communication. And that makes sense. Again, we're, to me, communication or the, the, the seed of communication in the three of swords is also about knowledge and how we explore that knowledge. And the Three of Swords is a card of, of growth, right? It may be difficult growth, but there's growth happening there. So how do we communicate that? How do we embody that? Heart chakra for the Four of Swords, like, come on, that totally works. The Five of Swords, heart chakra too. So it's almost like we see a balance and an imbalance in the Four and the Five, like a balanced heart being really in touch with the heart. And the Five of Swords is almost like an imbalance with the heart chakra. I wonder if that's true throughout the whole deck. Because, yeah, the Five of Swords is that um, almost, like, selfish kind of energy happening. So that's really interesting. And then here in the Six, we have the Solar Plexus for the Six of Swords. And this is where we're usually um, um, transcending whatever experience we've been having, kind of getting away from our baggage, moving upward and onward. Seven of Swords, Sacral. Look at that barely balancing. Yeah, and this one, this and the Eight of Swords, neither one feels very balanced because of course in the Seven, we're like in a precarious situation. You can see that here. She's juggling these swords on a very high thing here without a lot of stability and grounding. And then in the Eight, we're very stuck and trapped or we feel stuck and trapped or hemmed in. You can really feel that sort of um, fluttery feeling of the Sacral Chakra here. And then we're into the root for the Nine of Swords, but just beyond, beyond all this fear, there's this hope, this bridge of hope to lead her to a new way of thinking or way of being. So that's really pretty. And the struggle and the difficulty in the Ten of Swords, now we're into the root chakra still um, and really weighed down. 
Again, the Page of Swords. Now this time she's got a grasp of the sword, whereas in the other two pages they were reaching for their element. Here she's got a hold of the element, but she looks very determined, like she doesn't quite know how to wield it properly yet, which again works for the Page of Swords. And of course, this is our crown chakra again. Um, we have the solar plexus again for the night. I love all the movement in this card. The way her hair is in front of her face, that's perfect for that solar plexus-y night-y energy. Works. The queen of swords and the third eye, very regal, which purple regal totally works for the queen of swords. And the king of swords, all surrounded by his element, <coughs> throat chakra. All right, and we're on to our final suit, the pentacles. Here we have our ace of pentacles in the crown chakra. That juggling and intuition needed to balance things and harmonize things out, responsibilities out in the two of pentacles with the third eye totally works. The throat for the three of pentacles, obviously it makes sense, right? Communication is needed to collaborate. We're not collaborating if there's no communication. The Four of Pentacles, here we have the Heart Chakra, trying to hold on, um, protect oneself, hold on to what we have. There's a guarded energy to the Four of Pentacles for sure, so again, the heart makes sense here. Heart again in the Five of Pentacles, where we feel excluded, left out, or out in the cold in some way. Solar Plexus for the Six of Pentacles, here we really see an embodiment of confidence and really wanting to make things happen. The six, interestingly, is usually about rebalancing um, or balancing out what we have with what we give, that sort of thing. Here she has access to a lot of abundance in the tree, so how is she going to share that forward? The seven of pentacles, now we're into the sacral chakra, back into emotion. Here there's wood that's been cut and needs to be gathered. That's interesting. And the Eight of Pentacles, Mastering One's Craft. Here we have the carving. Again, we're still in the sacral, I believe. Yeah, we're still in the sacral. And then in the Nine, we move into the Root Chakra. And here, embodied, like surrounded by abundance and security, financial security, material security. And then the Ten. I love that she's on a swing here. She's fulfilled. She has everything that she needs. <clears throat> but it's more emotive than we typically see in the Ten of Pentacles, so I like that. And then our final court cards, we have the page for the crown reaching for his suit again. So again, that leaves the sword suit is the only one where she's actually grabbed it. You almost get the idea in the sword suit then that she's like a little bit rushing the process, which is interesting. Here the page is reaching for his element in the crown chakra. Our solar plexus knight of pentacles moving slow and steady, but still moving, right? Still doing. The queen of pentacles, the third eye chakra. I love that her throne is made of the um, roots and the earth. Love that. And then our king of pentacles, throat, um, same rooted kind of like throne here, but really, really works. So that is it for our walkthrough. Let's zoom out and we'll do a shuffle and a draw. Again, try not to judge the cardstock here because um, I believe this is a similar thickness. This might be 330 and the final product will be 350. But again, this is just a prototype deck. So we're gonna just do a random draw and then we'll read the full entry from the guidebook. The guidebook is going to be a deck-sized guidebook that lives in the box with the cards. All right, let's see. What do we have here? The Queen of Pentacles. So it'll be good to kind of get an idea of what the court, how the court cards look. So I've just got this open. I'm not gonna bring it on, oh, I, can I bring it on screen? I don't know. No, I'm not going to because it is just a manuscript style, but I've got it on my tablet over to the side. So let's go to the Queen of Pentacles and I'll read you what is in the guidebook here. So here we have um, the Queen of Pentacles and the guidebook says the chakra is third eye, which we can see here. The planetary energy is water of earth and the chakra healing message. You have so much wisdom when it comes to how you manage your resources. You understand what it means to be a responsible steward of energy, time, and resources. How you use your own energy affects not only yourself, but also those around you, and especially those who look to you for guidance, leadership, or nourishment. Remember that you are influencing others around you, even if you are not aware that you are. You are having an impact. Be wise with your own energy and resource usage and increase your awareness of your spiritual energy usage. Your spiritual energy is closely connected to your material world, energy, and resources. They reflect each other. Now is the time to build your knowledge of spiritual energy work from a variety of sources so that you can more deeply understand and wisely use all of the energy for which you are responsible. Um, the glowing key phrase 
is wise with money, wise with others' energy, intuitive leadership, responsible steward of energy and resources. The suppressed key phrases, irresponsible with energy or resources, not recognizing the connection between spiritual energy and money, leading irresponsibly in a way that wastes others' energy. And the traditional key phrases are intuitive in money and practical matters, limited view of loss and gain, wise leadership, aggressive if connection to resources is threatened. Um, and that is what the guidebook says about the Queen of Pentacles. There is quite a lot of information in the guidebook. It looks like it's over 200 pages or right around there. And near the beginning, there is an introduction. And let me just take a quick look at the table of contents. So there's a section on, there's an introduction, there's a section on getting to know your deck, one on the chakra correspondences in the tree of life. Let's actually look at that together briefly. Again, I'm not going to show it because I just, it's like I said, it's a uh, manuscript copy, but let's take a look. So here's what she has to say about that. I'm just going to read a little blip. Um, this deck combines the wisdom of Eastern spiritual knowledge, the chakras, with the wisdom of the Western mystery tradition, specifically the tree of life in Kabbalah. I'm going to skip a bunch of stuff. Da, 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 da. Um, you do not have to have any familiarity, familiarity with tarot chakras or the tree of life to work with this deck. Your chakra healing tarot has been created for everyone from absolute beginner to advanced professional reader, energy worker, and everyone in between. Um, and she has a full blog post um, in her blog about the tree of life correspondences. But in general, um, the aces are associated with Kether. Um, the twos with the kings, the threes with the queens, the fours with or the four on the tree of light, the fourth sephirot, uh, chess uh, fours, the fifth fives, um, eighth eights, nine nines, seven sevens, six sixes and knights, um, and the ten Malkuth would be the tens and the pages. Um, so there's a whole chart here, which I will just bring on screen so you can kind of see what I'm looking at. Um, and that also shows the paths between the different um, Sephirot and those are associated with the major arcana. So depending on the path, there's also an association there with the chakra. So she used that system as part of her association. So if you're familiar with the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, you might get that extra layer of goodness out of this deck. And if not, you might learn it as you work with it. But I didn't feel like it was necessary going through the images to know that. So that's good to know. And then also um, in the table of contents, sorry, I got distracted looking at that. Also in the table of contents, we have getting started with the deck. Then we have all the card meanings. There'll be some chakra healing, tarot spreads, meditation and ritual, and a conclusion a little bit about the um, deck creator and the artist. I have not mentioned the artist this whole video, so let's give her some credit here. The artist is Ella Mazur, and she is Toronto-based and works in ink and coloring her works digitally to create vibrant dreams world. Her art is inspired by the magic all around her, the diversity of creatures and plants that inhabit our planet, the endless depths of the ocean waves, the enchantment of the forests, and the mysteries of the stars in the sky. Beautiful. There. So I just fanned this out just so we have a pretty fan here at the end. I didn't do a great job fanning because I was totally looking at the book while I was fanning, but that's okay. It'll work. It works. It works. Let me just grab a card to be a placeholder here in the center. That, my friends, is the Chakra Healing Tarot. Thank you again to Malamir for letting me have an advanced look at this deck and share it with all of you guys. If you are considering backing this deck, now you will have seen all of the cards and all of the artwork and can make your decision about whether or not you would like to back this deck. Thank you again so, so much for joining me. Please do give this video a like if you enjoyed this walkthrough or found value in it. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and click the little bell so you're notified of my future videos. Thank you again so, so much and may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye guys.